Hello there and welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd get away from the usual club focused videos for a change and try something a little different for the channel. Golf fashion and how it's changed through the classic golf era. So here we go. Looking at what's on offer today in 2024, the choice for the casual golfer seems to be dominated by a fairly limited palette. Mostly black, shades of grey and dark blue with the occasional brighter colour. That's offset by a few niche brands that are as far to the opposite side of the spectrum as they can be, such as Royal and Awesome and Loudmouth. But we're interested in what was worn during the classic era, and for the purposes of this video I'm going to define that as being from the end of the Second World War through to 1980. And we'll do that primarily by looking at contemporary adverts from UK golf magazines. But let's begin with a very quick look at what was being worn at the end of the 1930s. And it is a very quick look, as I don't have much in the way of adverts from that time. To begin, here are a few golfers kitted out for play. First we have John Beck, wearing a light jacket, plain trousers and what looks like a collar and tie. Next up, a 20 year old Bobby Locke. A much slimmer figure than we're used to seeing, but still wearing the trademark plus fours. Then we have four players from the Boys' Championship of 1939. The age limit for the event is 18 years. Although the players here look much older, or maybe it's just their clothing that ages them, but it's pretty clear that the clothing of even very good players was pretty much what they might wear on any other day, rather than designed specifically for golf wear. And for lady golfers too, general practical clothing was the order of the day, even for champions. And right into the 70s and 80s, for men and women, general clothing seemed to be perfectly acceptable on the golf course. Here are a couple of 1930s adverts, and they're typical of what can be found in that they are generally outerwear for warmth or protection from the elements. This advert for a jacket was placed by Simpson of Piccadilly, London, a large sports and leisure retailer who traded for many years and stocked many of the larger golf brands. And this advert for the stylish Fast Jack claims it's worth a stroke a hole. Try that with trading standards today. Another jacket, this time from Grenfell, whose adverts featured in golf magazines for decades. A fashionable couple sporting Burberry. And now our friend in the Grenfell jacket has attracted a partner. No doubt his jacket had a part to play in that. And this looks like Ryder Cup golfer Harry Wheatman modelling a brusette pullover. Very nice and commodious. We're into the 1950s now and new materials are starting to make an appearance. Here we have Airtex shorts and vests. That excellent golfer Gene Donald, who I featured in a recent video, seen here modelling a striking item from the Brucette range. This chap looks a bit of a card, sporting a wasted Magyar jacket with the patented square cut pivot sleeve. Craning for a better view from their two-seater sports car are this couple, decked out in pig's whisker sweaters, whatever they are. A young Peter Alice keeping his head warm with a carry cap by Carrick of Carlisle. Almost a tongue twister, that one. Here we have a man at peace with his sweater. An oddly proportioned Henry Cotton with some immaculately styled fair waist trousers. And it can't be overestimated just how much influence Henry Cotton had on British golf. This advert is from 1961, and at this time he still features in many adverts for different products. A more modern looking graphic for Simpson of Piccadilly for Dax trousers. For many years Dax sponsored one of the more prestigious tournaments in British golf. New fabrics are definitely making their mark now. This gentleman models the Corker. Cool, comfortable, completely carefree, knitted in mini iron, Clydella. The Kintyre collection for ladies. Sharps catering for the more traditional golfer with plus twos and plus fours. Something new in socks. The rib is a fashion colour. The smart background is black. But I have to ask, is ditch water a fashion colour? Back with the striking graphics for this long sleeved sports shirt. And another, this time from Coxmoor. It's made this fella's day. Wow, there must be something in the Coxmoor range. This guy looks very happy with his pullover. Two adverts for the traditionalists again. But I can't see this advert for sailcloth skirts convincing many potential purchasers. 
These Yorkers slacks in terrilene have a very sharp crease. This Fred Perry cardigan could have been modelled a little more enthusiastically. Another man-made material, all on by Dupont. But let's be honest here, Arnie is going to look cool whatever he's wearing. Big Jack, also in all on. A cardigan is available too. Our friends at Sharps again. Although this chap looks like he's had a stinker of a round. A pair of likely lads sporting Fred Perry. We're starting to see a bit more colour in the photographs now. And here's a two page spread by Slazinger, who in the UK at least were one of the first club manufacturers to start getting into clothing as a sales line. Next we've got Gary Player in a pure new wool cardigan. Looking pretty smart I have to say. And here he is again in new wool trousers by Dax. Nice sharp creases on his trousers. Some humour now from Graham Textiles using supposed golf club characters to promote their wear. Can't see it making them any sales, I've got to be honest. But there you go. And here we've got a startling looking jacket by Greenmaster, the weather beater. Levi's getting into the golfing market now. I'm not sure whether this is the same Levi's that do the famous jeans. I'm guessing it is. But uh, stay pressed with a nice sharp crease there. And here we've got Richards and Thurkle with some sporting headgear. have to say though, for those in the UK, it looks more like one of the officers from the TV show Captain Scarlet. And here we've got Peter Alice in a wool mark slacks. Wool seems to be quite popular at this time by summary. And Richards and Thurkle again. This time looking a bit of a spiv in his Esteril Mark II hat. And I love this one. A guy looking very confident in his Stilo knitwear. He'll be able to head straight from the golf club to the local night spot without any need to get changed. We're really in the swinging 60s now. And now a bizarre advert, a twin set for men by Pringle of Scotland. And the photograph doesn't really do a lot to, to encourage people to buy it, I wouldn't have thought. And here we've got uh, some more offerings from Slazinger, ladies coordinates and an all white strip. The new golf slacks is worn by the English ladies team. Looks like she should be on the Avengers. Bit of an Emma Peel look. And here we've got Tony Jacqueline modelling a pair of shoes. Uh, this dates to 1971. And we're starting to see the Czech trousers which dominated golf fashion for such a long time. At least in the professional game. I'm not sure how much they were taken up by uh, club golfers. Because as you'll see, there aren't that many adverts for uh, Czech trousers. Although there are lots of pictures of professionals playing in them, as you can see here. These are taken mostly from the early to mid-1970s. Max Faulkner again, striding out in these shops plus twos. Ever best washable slack. Again, we've got the Czech influence here in terrilene. Some fairway fashions compiled by Patricia Bowerman. The Rembrandt golf shoe being modelled by a lady golfer. I'm not sure whether she'd pass most clubs' dress codes. The Pringle body hugging short sleeve botany sweater. Uh, I think that would struggle to get through most uh, golf clubs' dress codes. Slazinger's knitted hot pants. I don't remember seeing those on the golf course. And back to our friends at Grenfell. This time 1972. Here's a guy looking slightly bashful next to that attractive model, sporting his Pringle polo, pretending to admire one of the woods in the selection of clubs there. Wow, this guy must be at least a scratch golfer to carry that look off so confidently. No one would dare comment on his colour choice, even if they wanted to. He's wearing the frosted lilac. Also available, tangerine frost, blue frost, frosted pink and iced caramel. This has got to be one of my favourite adverts out of all those I've found. The guy just looks such a dude. Another double page spread here by Slazinger, the Magnificent Seven. Again, I'm not sure that this would sell many uh, items of clothing. And another double page spread. This one for equipment as worn by the Ryder Cup team. 
the off the course outfit a little bit daring and now we've got a, a, a very large spread which must have cost a few pounds by Actionwear 74 beginning with this single page of golfer's delight the ladies shoes don't look uh, suitable for a golf course maybe they're just supporting their fella there in the bunker here we've got tops and then we've got golfers having a picnic on the course and again we've got a range of tops and some socks and rather fancy gloves as well and then we've got a golfer on the beach i'm not sure what he's doing is he's not even got a ball there and he's certainly testing the waterproof capabilities of his shoes umbrellas head covers for both clubs and heads and here we've got a nightclub scene one of the chaps is uh, obviously getting along very well with the ladies while the sad golfer is practicing his puts into a mini ice bucket and then we've got a display of headgear again don't remember seeing any of these on a golf course perhaps a good thing coming back to the check trousers now here we've got a, a pair that uh, very reminiscent of the Johnny Miller style that flat fronted waist again quite a wide flare on them I'd love to find a pair of these for a, a vintage golf meet and here's another pair similar sort of style a bit too much of a flare probably for me but very very dashing look and another odd cap supported by a gentleman who again isn't the sort of uh, character you'd expect to in inspire uh, the buying public no offense sir our friends at Grenfell again here we've got a gentleman in a very stiff looking jacket that I don't think would aid your golf swing very much and uh, his lady friend again in a sort of restrictive looking jacket now we've got another double page spread by Slazinger with some very uh, out there shirts quite colourful trousers as well the two chaps in the background look a bit dismayed this is really an advert for golf shoes but it was the trousers that caught my eye they look like uh, curtains certainly here we've got an interesting advert playing on the uh, colour prejudice which was quite strong at the time there was a lot of uh, argument and discussion about this at the end of the 1970s I think this might be a pro celebrity golf match but they're obviously using the colour prejudice to say how colourful their clothing is this isn't a bit of clothing but I just thought it was a very interesting thing the Lynx Lady golf bag with detachable security bag or handbag uh, so it doesn't really fulfill either function I don't think it looks awful as a handbag and what's the point of having a detachable bag on your golf bag there you go somebody thought it was a good idea but the fact that we never really saw it again suggests that it wasn't here we've got our friend Gary Player again support sporting some Pringle clothing a small ad this time not all ads were colorful uh, but again did anybody see this and think oh I've got to go to Moray Company and buy some of their trousers made to size doubtful I would have thought crimpling polyester the bold checks and stripes and vibrant colours of the late 1960s to mid 1970s started to fade out as we reached the end of the 1970s epitomised here by this Brill advert here we've got Max Bygraves uh, sitting on a stool wearing Brill gear just looks like plain pale blue here we have a few brighter coloured clothes still still around uh, this is a feature called Clothes Encounters obviously taking its cue from the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind here we've got another brightly coloured shirt from Munzing Wear and here we've got our old friend Gary Player he must appear on more adverts than anyone this time sporting Pringle in superwash wool Howard Clark became a, a favourite with the advertising companies his blonde hair and blue eyes making him a, a, a marketing dream seen here wearing hom and again wearing hom this time in a dowdy brown colour with beige trousers look at the big collar though brills again just uh, plain colours and here we've got Dunlop quite a stuck up poster this one 
certain to make everyone look a great golfer. But I'm willing to bet that the guy on the left would give the guy on the right a real run for his money should they uh, meet each other in a match. And here we've got Howard Clark again, this time modelling Farah slacks. Glenn Muir this time, with uh, Roger Davies, I think he is, wearing this. Striking plus twos there. And here we've got an advert for Lyle and Scott, still around today. Two plain coloured v-neck jumpers. Bright colours for the for today though. And here we have Munzing wear again. The world's biggest seller of leisure wear. I'm not sure what happened to them. Some very uh, confident poses from the models. Guy landing his helicopter. Heading straight out to the golf course. And here we have a bit of thermal wear. TOG24 leaders in thermal clothing. Nice uh, very warm looking top there. And that brings us to the end of the photographs that I found. This is the, uh, I think this was the December edition uh, of 1980. I had a quick delve into magazines from the 1980s, 1987 and 1989, but I could only find two adverts. This one for Glenn Muir, pretty plain and simple. And this one for Beaver, a little brighter, but still nothing inspiring. What have we learned from this look back at old magazines? Golfwear began as whatever the golfer owned that was suitable. Outdoor clothing that was warm enough and when necessary could keep the elements away. As we moved into the 1950s, clothing designed specifically for golf, or at least labelled as suitable for golf, began to appear and over time it took on a certain style. By the time we reached the late 1960s, bolder patterns and brighter colours had become the norm reaching a peak at the end of the 1970s and into the 90, early 1980s, when checks and stripes in vibrant colours could be seen on golf courses. By the end of the 1980s, however, colours tended to revert to more muted tones, leading eventually to where we are today. If this video inspires any of you to dress to match the era of your classic golf clubs, then it's been well worth it. I hope you've managed to stay this far, as I'd like to end by saying a big thank you, as last month the channel achieved the 1000 subscriber level and became a YouTube partner. Thank you to all of you. Well I hope you enjoyed this, as the next video will be in a similar vein but looking at shoes and waterproofs. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!